wanted to tell, take a minute and tell you about this uh, amazing rose. Um, she's a Lady Banks, and this is a double yellow flower. There is a white one. I believe the white one has thorns, and the yellow ones do not. Uh, as you can see, we can grab her. It's awesome. It's awesome. No thorns. The one downside is she's a vigorous grower. So this is how big she got over the last probably nine, 10 months. And I've been trimming her. I trimmed her all last year. So you can see in some areas she might not bud because I trimmed her all through the year. You want to prune a lady banks right after flowering the same way you would a, a rhododendron or an azalea because they bloom on the old wood. She will start setting buds immediately after flowering and onto the, the wood from this year. So if you prune her late into the year, you'll take off all her buds. So probably because I have her in such a confined area, I would have to take her all the way down here right after she flowers and then allow her to grow back up through the summer so that she doesn't get too big for this space. Um, I've been spending probably the last two months training her to go around this obelisk. And um, so I imagine throughout the summer she's going to get probably double this size. So I'm going to have to do something about it, either move her or, but I have, I not only bought one, I bought two. And this was an impulse buy. I bought hundreds of plants last year. and. I think this is the only plant that I did not research before I bought it because years ago I used to buy everything I liked and then they would grow way too big for their space, they were high maintenance and had I looked her up I definitely wouldn't have put her here. So she's going to be high maintenance, um, certainly worth it, she's absolutely gorgeous. Um, I'm in love with this rose, um, I'm not sure did I tell you, I think I did, that she's thornless so the yellow ones but the white ones. They have less thorns than normal roses, but I believe they do have some small thorns. Um, if you kind of go behind her flower, you can kind of see a little, but not, nothing that would grab you or hurt in any way. So it's wonderful. She's wonderful to prune. Um, her buds are amazing. I'll show you a close up when I get done um, telling you about her. She's hardy in zone six through nine. Um, you can put her, if you have chain link, I have seen this rose grow along chain link up to 40 feet. I've seen them go. You just got to give her time, but they can get big. They say 15 to 20 feet. Just judging from her growth now, I'm saying it's more like 40 feet. So she can go really, really far. I think that they, I think she's native to China and um, I think grows down hills and ravines does not take shade um will not i don't think will bloom in shade so best in full sun the the other one you'll see is a less vigorous grower but it gets part sun and you can tell the difference although it did flower really nice and it's on high ground and normally anything on high ground grows a little bit bigger in, in on my property so otherwise it's she's not fussy at all um, I believe that you can eat her fruit when she seeds, but there's little hairs on her seeds that must be removed because those, um, I think are mildly toxic and can cause, I think, mouth, skin, and, um, digestive irritation. So you want to remove those before you can, and then you could use it for herbal reasons, or I would just say don't don't bother there's roses that aren't toxic that you can eat and not worry about that um i think she's just really here for her beauty um i believe she's both um male and female and so has male and female parts and so the bees po pollinate to create all this um wonderful flowering I'm trying to think if there's anything i missed um, she can be grown all along fences. Um, you do have to, as far as I can tell, she doesn't have any suckers. So 
you do have to train her because it's just basically very flexible stems like willow when willow branches come out initially whips that's kind of how i would describe her it's like she she basically has a whip and it's very easy to bend it doesn't break easy like clematis so it's she's very easy to train and um she or he obviously both male and female and um, I think that that's about it. I'll give you some close-up pictures of her. And um, so if you got a space that you want to cover and you want this kind of show once a year, this is the rose for you. I absolutely adore her. And if she gets too big for this spot, I'll probably just cut her down, lift her up, and find somewhere where she can just kind of go mad if it's not working out and I can't get her to bloom year after year because she just grows too vigorous. I am going to put in a, probably a rose arbor when I find the right size between the two obelisks. Then they can grow over top and I think it'll be beautiful. It's gonna make it archway over top of the fountain. I had to turn the fountain off because it was making too much noise because I don't want a microphone. So that's it and um, I hope this was good information. Um, like I said, definitely worth the effort. She's a beauty. Thank you. Have a great day.